Hey, I'm Greg Quintard. I'm from Nash Community College. I'm a hospitality management instructor here. I'm also a Surf Safe certified instructor with the National Restaurant Association. And what we'd like to talk to you today about is how to prevent foodborne illness by understanding and controlling your temperatures. And this often is an area that, that confuses students because there's so many different numbers that you need to know and memorize. And the importance of it is not only in preventing foodborne illness, which we all know is a disease um, that people get from food, but to also realize that we need to understand where in relationship food will be stored in your refrigerator because it's the temperatures that determine where that's going to be. So we need to know all our temperatures and where they are so we can get them in the refrigerator right so we don't get people sick by things dripping on others. All right, so we all know that there are different conditions or factors that apply to foodborne illness and as managers we control those. Remember we talked about the anachronism fat tom, which quite seriously is the foods, foods predominantly being those would be proteins, the acidity level, which would be neutral in acidity, right in the middle of the pH range. The two factors that you can control most as operators and managers are going to be your time and temperatures. And then we realize we have oxygen and moisture. Oxygen means like when we open something, where do we put it? Back in the refrigerator? Right. Refrigerate after opening. And moisture is water activities, how much water is in food products. And we take all these conditions together and these are the types of foods that are most commonly time and control for safety foods, okay? So, what do we do? We have to keep our foods out of the areas that are most prone to bacteria growing. That, quite frankly, is our temperature danger zone, isn't it? And we know that our temperature danger zone runs from 41 on the cold side and 135 on the hot side. So necessarily, if we're going to hold our food in a restaurant setting, it's going to be at 135, hot. We're going to hold our food at 41, cold. Same principle applies if we're delivering food. So if we deliver food anywhere, it's got to be maintained at 41. If we deliver food anywhere, it's going to be held at 135. The reason for that is right in the middle is room temperature, isn't it? About 70 degrees. And that's where microorganisms grow most rapidly. Also, our body temperature is right there, 98 degrees. So our bodies are fertile grounds, and so is room temperature. You should all remember that the number four is the maximum amount of time that we can have food out in this temperature danger zone before we have to throw it out. So if we know that bacteria grows with time and temperature, under these conditions, as managers, we have to control those. So what do we do is we cook our food at the proper temperature because while cooking does not kill viruses, we control that through personal hygiene, it will kill bacteria. And all the different bacteria of which you're familiar with, salmonella, um, E. coli, any of these, if we cook those particular microorganisms to the right temperature, it'll kill them. So that's why we need to know what our temperatures are. And I got this little story that um, <clears throat> I wanted to share with you. And it's a little, I've made this up, but it's, it's something that I hopefully can help you remember it, okay? Many, many, many years ago, millions of years ago, the ocean was covered with water, wasn't it? And at the very lowest point of the ocean, plants grew, didn't they? So they were at the very lowest temperature, which is 135, conversely also our holding temperature. So way down at the bottom of the ocean was our plants, and we call these any type of heat-treated plant foods. So anything that's in the ground is 135 cooking. Well, as you probably all know, the mountains eventually came up out of the ocean. And what type of species loves to swim around in the ocean? Did you say fish? I thought I heard you say fish. All right, so we have fish that are in the ocean still. Well, they're a little bit above 
your plant products, so we cook them to 145. And as you all probably remember, what do fish lay? Eggs. So eggs and fish, or seafood, are all cooked to 145. Well, that fish got a little tired of eating seafood, you know how that gets. And he decided to grow a couple legs and start moving up the mountain. Well, he didn't get too far, so he was still at 145, and he's called meats. So any kind of meats that are whole meats, steaks, chops, um, whole, whole cuts of meats, prime rib, anything like that, are only going to be 145. Well, he saw way up here at the top some lights, some big sun. So he decided he'd go find out what was going on up there. So he broke out of the water, but he didn't realize something. Another guy had beat him out. And what, what do animals like to do when they get together? Don't think it. What do they like to do? They like to fight, don't they? So when animals get together, they fight, and one of them got all ground up. So he's necessarily going to be at 155. So he kept moving, moving up that mountain, got to the top. He still wanted to go a little higher to that sun, so he grew some wings. And he flew up. Except now he was really hot, so he had to be cooked to 175. So anything that has wings, which would be any kind of poultry product, will be at 165. The sun is very similar to what we would consider to be a microwave, wouldn't we? So a microwave is hot. Anything in the lower region will always be cooked in a microwave to 165. So as we switch over to here, we see that, well, he got a little too close to the sun, and he got his wings burnt. So what happened? Oh, he fell down out of temperature. But he liked it up there. So he wanted to go back up there. So he had to be reheated. And we had two hours for him to be reheated back up to 165. So anytime we reheat any kinds of food, it's going to be 165. If we have any kind of ingredients that have two or more, i.e. soup, salad, soups, stews, um, stuffed meats, anything, lasagna, that's got two items, and that's always going to be 165 also. That gives you your broad base of your temperatures. Now you're going to try to slide over here. And remember, we got a cool food also. So you got a cool food in how many hours? The two hours comes right here. You cool that to 70 degrees, which is our room temperature, in two hours. If you don't, what do you have to do with the food? If it's not cooled in two hours, you got to reheat it to 165 or throw it out. Then they give you an additional four hours to get it from 70 to 41 for a total cooling time of six hours. And we do that on the premises that it's moved through the most dangerous area of temperature, so they give you the extra little time to get it cool. So that becomes your cooling temperatures. There's a couple of little anomalies in here that you got to remember. One was eggs for immediate service is 145. If we're not going to serve them immediately, we're going to hot hold them in a steam table, then buffet eggs come over here to 155. Okay. So now we see we got most of all of our key numbers that you're going to need to keep your food safe. Any questions? So now that we got our temperatures, the importance here is that we need to know what relationship they have in the refrigerator. So anything that's not going to be cooked will always go on. Ready to eat food will always go on top. And then we just work down the scale. So then you put your vegetables on the next shelf. Your fish or seafood and eggs should be on the next shelf. Your steaks and whatnot would be on the next, down to ground beef. And then finally, your poultry will always be on the last shelf. And if we maintain that, the premise is that 
chicken drip droppings won't drop on your produce, which is not going to be cooked. So if you know which relation, if I tell you, hand you three separate items, and you just know what, you already immediately know what shelf to put them on in your refrigerator. All these same practices work not only in restaurant, but obviously work at home too.